Okay, today is Tuesday, June 19th, and this is the opening of the Board of Selectmen meeting. We'll be opening up and going into executive session by a roll call vote. No, how about a motion first? Okay, how about a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, to conduct strategy sessions and preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. So IT moved. director. So moved. Second. Okay. I thought yep, so we got. No, he had a. Mr. No, Bloss, are you in favor? Uh, yes. Mrs. Yes. Kevin. Yep. I'm yes. in favor. Yes. Yes. Matt. Okay. We're now in executive session. Good evening. Today is Tuesday, June 19th, 2018, and this is the opening of the Board of Selectmen meeting. This meeting is being televised by Whitman Hanson Community Access. Can you please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a moment of silence for Maureen Lowe. Thank you. All right. Good evening, Hanson. The this is this week's announcement. Volunteers are needed for the following two hundred. Uh, following committees, the 200th anniversary, capital improvement, community preservation, com uh, pr community preservation commission, disabilities, economic development, elder affairs, energy, final Plymouth County reuse com uh, committee, finance, Memorial Day, Patriot observance, patriotic, patriotic observance, uh, Memorial Day trustees, recreation com committee, uh, commission, school repair, and zoning uh, board alternate. Applications for appointment and information on the committees are available on the town's website. The water department reminds residents that a water use uh, restriction is now in effect. Watering with handheld hoses only are allowed from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Sprinklers are not allowed. The water department reports that the water tank will be at proper levels within the next days and water discoloration uh, should be clearing. If discoloration continues, they suggest running the outside faucet for several minutes until the line is clear. The town clerk's office will be closed 2 p.m. next Thursday, June 28th. Please plan your business accordingly. The animal control officer will be holding a community event uh, on Friday, July 13th from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the town hall green. A rabies clinic will, be t uh, will take place from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Town Clerk's Office will be open to licensed dogs during the Rabies Clinic. Upcoming committees, Whitman Hanson Regional High School um, Negotiation com Medge Committee? Negotiation. Yeah, committee. Negotiation Committee will be taking place June 20th uh, at 4.30. Whitman Hanson Regional School District Audit Committee will also be taking place Wednesday, June 20th at 6 p.m. And the Whitman Hanson School Committee meeting will also be on June 20th at 7 p.m. Selectmen's meetings will be on July 10th, 24th, and August 14th, all at 7 p.m. Um, uh, two Good. other uh, meetings. Um, the uh, Recreation Commission is going to be meeting June 25th and July 9th. Okay. New business. Swearing Firefighter Lieutenant Sherry Mullen. Chief Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Board members, thanks for having us here tonight. It's nice to see everybody here as we swear in our newest lieutenant, Sherry Mullen. Um, as the board remembers, this vacancy tonight that we're swearing in for was created by um, us filling the deputy chief's position. The lieutenant process for our department is outlined in the collective bargaining agreement, and it consists of a written portion, which you need to get a 70% or better to move on to the assessment center, which for this exam process consisted of a fire problem as well as a structured interview. Um, the candidates were all graded, and at the end of it, Firefighter Mullen was the top candidate. We had seven members of the department participate in this process. 
Um, and although we only had one position available, I believe that those members in our department benefited by taking the time to study the materials and prepare themselves um, for the process that they went through. So a little bit about um, Lieutenant Mullen. She um, grew up in Abington and graduated from Abington High in 2006. Um, she went to Bridgewater State University and graduated with a bachelor's degree in 2010. And during that time, she decided to um, go the EMS route. And she went to EMS and became a paramedic. Um, in 2015, we hired her as a full-time firefighter paramedic. At that time, she had several years in the EMS field, and um, she became a full-time firefighter paramedic for us. Uh, she worked for a private ambulance company before that. And upon us hiring her, she successfully completed the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy recruit training program from a member of Class 234. On May 8th, she was assigned as the lieutenant on D-shift and has been a great addition to our command staff. Does the board have any questions? Before um, our town clerk and Lieutenant Mullen comes up, I would just like to point out that Lieutenant Mullen will be the first female fire officer in the town of Hanson. Fire lieutenant to the best of your abilities in accordance with the bylaws of the town and the laws of the Congress. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Lieutenant Mullen's going to have her badge pinned on by her fiance, Sean. Thank We'll take a brief recess, just a couple of minutes. Congratulations. And there goes our audience. Everybody's <laughs> gone. Thanks for coming. Okay. We're back in session. Okay, next under new business, we have a discussion, marijuana ballot discussion with town council, impossible approval of marijuana application policy. So you guys that have your iPads, that is under item three. There's a couple of things under here. There's item three and then item three A. It, actually, it's three two three C. Two three uh, C. The first one is. Um, okay, I give you a packet right there if you want oh, to follow thanks. along. Uh, yeah, mine is four. So the very first, the very first, is it four? I, I have four, starting with letterhead, date, guidance. Yes, for three, three, three A, three B, and three C, which is the actual Do you update? ballot. Do you guys an update? Okay. I, I reposted everything because oh, the okay. numbers were, yeah. were mixed up. All right. Uh, we're all on the same page anyway. Yep, okay. three, three A, and three B. Yeah, it's on the new, it's on the Dropbox. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the first thing I did was the, um, the guide. The first okay. thing you did yeah. the guide. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want me to come up here? Is yeah, that, that's fine. Sure. Capture it? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. I, I prepared a bunch of documents for you all to address the issue of how to, um, number one, deal first with any applicants that may come to the town of Hanson. And um, I pr provided you uh, kind of a procedure that you could hand to any of the applicants and say this is this is the process we're going to follow so essentially what you want to do because it's not necessarily spelled out in the law what the order should be in terms of local approvals um, so you want to create a policy like this to say this is what we expect when you come before us to to request a host community agreement and that's for am I being picked up is it okay yeah. okay um, and that's for every every type of establishment, including your 
currently, your retailers, um, your cultivators, your manufacturers, and your testing facilities, okay? Because all of them are required by law to execute a host community agreement. So in addition, under the CCC regs, that host community agreement has to be executed before they can even apply to the CCC, okay? Because when they file their application of intent, they have to file a one-page certificate mm -hmm. essentially attesting to the fact that the host community agreement is in place. And from the time that somebody might come forward and say that they wanted to do business here in whatever capacity, what's the turnaround time? Uh, that we have to have to talk you know get get them to do all of these various you know community outreach i mean we're able to put a timeline on this i assume well i mean you can put a timeline but i would suggest not um putting a timeline you want to fully vet them so you want to make sure that number one you fully negotiated the agreement number two that they have their planning board um uh, actually i take that back in hansen you all are the special permit granting authority. So they have to come to you first and present their plans, um, which um, will include um, security sign off by the police department. Um, you, you vet it as if you were a planning board. It's, it's not atypical to have a board of selectmen um, be the permit granting authority and enhance and it makes sense because you don't have a licensure bylaw anyway. Right. So it allows you to vet them initially in terms of what does this establishment look like physically and what are the neighbors looking like, what kinds of conditions do you need to impose and all of that stuff. So that requires public hearings and that whole process has to be completed and you have to be um, satisfied with their presentation that they've met the qualifications that spelled out under the um, special permit bylaw before you issue that permit so that's step number one and it could take a long time or it could take uh, one hearing if you're super satisfied with all of the information they provided to you so you want to make sure that they before you even get into the host community agreement because that's negotiating right the financial impacts and and some of the other um, kinds of um, some some communities are asking for local hiring preferences um, where feasible um, so there are all kinds of other nuggets that you can attach to a host community agreement but first you want to see are they situated in the right place of, in town are they within the buffer zones from schools that sort of stuff is preliminary and pretty straightforward so so once you have that in place then you move on to well also, provide me the information that you're providing to the CCC. That's one of the things that I request because they're going to have a business plan prepared if, if they're a, a, a sophisticated enough uh, entity. They should have a business plan so you'll know what they're expecting in terms of revenue because remember that um, under the law, you can ask for a maximum of 3% of their gross revenue. Well, we passed that at our town meeting. That, Pardon? That we passed our most recent town meeting. No, no, no. That what you passed at town meeting was the sales tax, and that applies to retailers. But the 3% community impact fee is actually something that no oh. gets negotiated into the host community agreement and applies to all of the entities. So your, re uh, your retailers, manufacturers, cultivators, and um, testing facilities, all of those are potentially subject to a maximum cap of 3% of their gross revenue. And what that has to do, um, what you have to tie that to rather, is what are the real impacts on the community? So one of the impacts that you're going to find is the Board of Health is going to have to ramp up because they are now the inspection agency, whereas under medical it was DPH, not in the purview of the Board of Health. So we're going to have to do training. We're going to have to, um, you know, think about staffing depending upon the number of, of establishments that are planning on um, citing in Hanson. So all of those impacts, police impacts, police, yeah. you know, are that's another thing. So and and some of those impacts could be um, also training for your police personnel in terms of detection, you know, because it's not as straightforward or, or something that they're as used to and as they are familiar with alcohol. But testing is one, uh, training, 
Um, also just routine passes around these establishments because they're a security risk um, in that for break-ins and, and things of that nature. So you want to make sure that they have all those things in place before they come to you and say, now let's negotiate. Mm -hmm. And so you are fully equipped with all the information you have or you'll need in order to negotiate the appropriate fee and the appropriate terms. So this kind of just, you know, um, sets it out. Oh, the other, the other piece that they're required to do by <coughs> law, and I would prefer them to do it and I require them to do it if you pass this policy, is have their community impact um, meeting. So what that is, is it essentially advises the residents of what they're expecting to site in the town, what they expect the impacts to be. Um, the residents have a right to ask them questions. It's not a hearing, it's not an approval process, but rather an informational um, uh, update process so and I think that's it and once we get to that stage by the way please loop us back in because we um, have, a, have a lot of experience negotiating the host community agreements it might be helpful to reach out to us and and kind of get a sense of what we've seen come across our desk in other communities so that you're getting the most um, beneficial agreement for the town so that's pretty straightforward. Um, I had a quick question. I yeah. Through the board. Okay. Um, Could you state your name and your sure, address, please? Adam Valkovic, 372 of Home Street, Hanson. Um, did a little research, and apparently one of the big things, especially in Massachusetts, is getting a letter of non-opposition. Would that be part of the initial phase, or is that when the application phase? Yeah, so so the letter of non-opposition is traditionally associated with the medical facility, so what's called your RMDs, your registered me medical um, dispensaries. And I don't think Hansen has an RMD, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and that DPH process still exists for the time being because although the transition from DPH to CCC is going to occur, they haven't gotten that organized yet and they have to essentially marry the two to determine what DPH regs are going to stay, what are going to go. So uh, really in place of the letter of non-opposition or letter of support, some other communities are more affirmative um, than just a letter of non-opposition is the host community agreement because at that point they've said, hey, we've worked out all the terms, we feel comfortable with this applicant, so it's in the essence of letter of support. Yeah, and just, you know, I mean, through you obviously, the mm -hmm. board knows, like, you know, the city of Worcester recently signed, um, through this letter of non-opposition, they agreed to $450,000 per year, right? That was automatically granted in, along with the percentages Kate mentioned before, right? It was less than 3%, but, you know, the static number was way above what they That was one of my have. questions, whether we um, could lock in a dollar yes. amount. Yeah, you can. So, essentially, and, and I've seen it both ways. It, with, with a fixed figure, you have a guarantee. Um, but you don't necessarily benefit if the, if the entity does really, really well and may also impact the community. Because remember, when the state passed this legislation, they wanted to ensure that prices stayed low. And if and only if the town had actual impacts that are public records that they can tie back to the marijuana establishment is it something that they can charge the fee for? So that's really important to, and that's how you can figure that out more so once you've gotten their business plan um, to see what actual impacts the actual establishment is going to have, the, the specific establishment. Now also, and, and Kenny, I do think it would be helpful to just set the table a little bit on this because we've jumped right into this, um, this discussion. We have voted to have an article on the town meeting warrant that is going to ask people one more time with feeling do you want one a, a recreational marijuana facility in Hanson if Retail people truck. vote um, if people vote yes that they do well if, if people vote yes um, that they will go to the ballot um, if, right. it, but however in the interim we're talking about having something in place 
I guess just in the event that somebody comes forward, well, we don't want to be somebody could come yeah, we don't want to be left out in the cold without having something that we at least can manage the process until such time as we get to town meeting and it's determined there. right right because it not not to jump ahead and I and I don't I don't mean to jump ahead but you're making a really good point here um, in the last town meeting the town approved the siting of all re uh, recreational marijuana establishments so all four types including retail um, in certain areas of the town and um, what is being proposed as a new measure to ban retail, so essentially your marijuana package stores um, within the town. But either way, this policy yep. would still apply. It would just apply to your other users, your um, cultivators, testing okay. facilities, and manufacturers. So it's still important to have in place, and it's important to have in the interim so that folks know if they file something with the town, this is what the, the process, what process the town is going to follow, and it will be followed uniformly. And uh, if I and I apologize, coming back from the uh, the FinCon meeting, I don't know if you touched upon this, but Kate and I did have a conversation uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks or so, and the concern that I had, and I think the board would share, is if there were any grandfathering provisions. In other words, you know, we we plan, and I think Kate's going to explain the process of the the ballot and the the town meeting vote. Uh, we plan to have that uh, around the October, November time frame. But in the meanwhile, if somebody comes and actually presents us right. with an application, um, they are not technically grandfathered in. Um, and if you would explain how that process could be managed up to the point where the town makes a decision on whether or not it wants to go forward with retail uh, locations. Yeah, and we have to be really careful around this discussion because, again, this is an area of the law that's emerging and it has not been tested. So unlike your smelting facility or something that we have case law on, we have nothing on marijuana establishments right. at this point. So the way it works is generally speaking when you have a general bylaw in place there's no grandfathering so for example the the bulk storage bylaw that we that we almost passed at town meeting was a general bylaw so that wouldn't have grandfathered your existing um bulk storage right. entities anyone who's who's storing bulk so unlike zoning where zoning has a grandfather component okay and um and what you can do in zoning, for example, is you can file a, what's called an ANR plan and freeze the zoning. So say, it, once I file my application now, the zoning is frozen for me and, and that zoning would be applicable to me. So it would include that retail component. But what we have proposed for this town meeting is both a general and a zoning bylaw. So number one, if the general bylaw passes and is approved, you can argue that it's not a um, not a a grandfathered use. Okay, but that being said, why are we also doing a general and a zoning bylaw? And that's because the attorney general has offered her opinion that for those communities that want to prohibit any one of these types of uses, they should pass both a general and a, uh, and a zoning bylaw. And the reason being is, because many of the attorneys when this initially came out thought we would only pass a general bylaw. The reason she suggested passing both was there's existing case law that stands for the proposition that if it looks like a zoning bylaw, talks like a zoning bylaw, and walks like a zoning bylaw, it is one, even if you call it a general. And so in those cases, some general bylaws were invalidated because the attorney general, or the courts rather, said that you hadn't had the proper procedure to pass it, namely the two thirds, the public hearing vetted before the planning board, um, you hadn't followed those kind of protectionary procedures, and so as a consequence, that general bylaw has no effect because it should have been a zoning bylaw. So, if both measures pass and aren't aren't challenged or are challenged and properly defended, there's no grandfathering. So it is complicated, and there are risks in this kind of interim period. Now, what other things are we able to? Um, uh, negotiate um, 
yeah. as part of the, the community host agreement. Ours are already dictated, I believe, under the law. Are we able to further reduce those? Or like, <coughs> I think it's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or? Oh. Um, and I'm specifically talk, talking about retail when I'm on talking retail. about this. Yeah. So, and I, I actually, I have the old by law here. Did it specify the hours? I can't remember. I just saw that somewhere. Did you? I, yeah. I, I'll take your word for it. So if it's specified in there, the hours are specified. You can't, you can't go beyond those hours unless at the special permit hearing, you as the permit granting authority, not as the host community um, board of selectmen executing the host community agreement, somehow waived that condition. Okay. Okay. So that would have to be addressed at the outset. Um, but other terms that can go into a host community agreement include, like I said, local hiring preferences. Yeah. So you, you hire the folks from, from Hanson if possible. Um, other things that I've seen are, um, you know, notification to the police department in the event of a diversion, a diversion being I've lost my marijuana and we're trying to find it. So you notified the police department. Can you clarify who you, who's losing the marijuana? If if the if the cultivator, for example, okay. lost three pounds of marijuana in the transfer to the manufacturing facility, it's okay. called a diversion. Okay. And they have to notify the police department in a. Um, I won't tell you if I've lost my marijuana. <laughs> 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 if if one of the entities <laughs> permitted by the town misplaces or it's stolen or whatever uh, they, they have to notify the police that wouldn't um, be required already it's required to notify the CCC okay so and we've just incorporated it as part of the contract okay. too so there would be a breach of contract claim should they fail to do so timely um, there are provisions that you can add for revocation in the event that they don't comply with terms of their special permit, for example, or terms contained in the HCA. Um, there are uh, security requirements that you can insist upon. So a retailer, you might say, okay, for the first year as a, as a temporary safeguard, I want you to have a, a security guard and then we'll revisit it. Um, that's an option. What about a bond if they're going to, uh, in the event that they just up and leave? <coughs> yep, full you could. Walmart on us and just, you know, kind of leave an empty building and. Yeah, I didn't know about Walmart, but you yeah. can. Well, you, uh, that's fictitious. Oh, but they've okay. got it in local in, <laughs> in local towns. Yeah, yeah, so you can you can try to negotiate any of, any of those terms. Okay. Yeah, and be creative and be thoughtful about it. I'd say. Okay. Um, so if we, we have somebody come forward and they, we go through all of these steps and we deem it to be in the best interest and we enter into a host community agreement, then they would apply to the CCC saying we've entered into the host agreement, here's our business plan, here's all the other documentation that you require, and then what is the process from there? So that, that's just the application of intent, and then they have to um, do a build out and um, really appear as if the, they're, they're hitting the ground running and actually be ready to engage in business, and then their final certificate with the CCC will issue. So it's a process mm -hmm. before they get finally approved by the state, for sure. So this, this Article 1, the retail is a general bylaw, that's one of the ones we should adopt? Yeah, so looking at, uh, and, I, and I screwed up the order now, Mary, of course. Um, <laughs> looking at here, this, the one called Warrant Articles, um, and motions. I don't know if, if you. I think it. Um, I see, think I don't look. I don't look at the iPad either. <laughs> well, yeah, isn't it's this just, what it's would just end Article up being? One, marijuana retailer general bylaw. Exactly, isn't this what and we it, would have on the town warrant. Yes. Isn't yeah. that basically? What and then the motions below. So that. that would be that would and be the, the second item. The motions below that. So so what my major concern you with Hanson was this. Okay, um, so the timing it's of and moving on for anyone who's watching on TV. We're moving on to the measures to prohibit retail marijuana within the town. So one of my major concerns was, okay, we have this existing zoning bylaw. 
which um, it's, it's going through the AG's office right now. I actually just spoke with um, the municipal law unit today. Um, it's going through that process and being reviewed. But what happens, that gets approved. We have something on the books. We've done our due diligence to properly cite marijuana establishments in the town where they should be located. And we go to the special town meeting in September, Mary? October. Oct October. Yeah. October. And we successfully passed this amendment which prohibits retailers. So this, this um, bylaw is written. It, it essentially is replacing what we have on the books, right? Yeah. And so then, but in order for this bylaw to be effective, you have to have the ballot measure, which comes later right. on November 6th. So my concern was it passes at town meeting um, and then it fails at the ballot because it's different groups that come to each Absolutely. event. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was fearful that um, we would then have nothing because we've essentially repealed through the town meeting process, but what we passed at the subsequent town meeting wouldn't be effective because the ballot measure failed. Would so the existing one still be in effect until bull process? And, 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 and that's exactly right, Kenny. And, but what I did was I wanted to make that crystal clear to the voters and to the public and to the potential establishments. So what I did was, if you can see in the article, the Warren article, I say to see if the town, and normally you go, we'll vote to amend, but I say expressly contingent on an <coughs> affirmative vote by the town residents at local town election on November 6th. And then at the bottom you'll see it says, this section shall only be effective upon passage by the voters at the town election. So you've tied them together. Tied so, them together yep. so everyone is fully informed, including the AG's office, including the general public outsiders, that the original zoning bylaw will still be in effect. And then, okay. So mm -hmm. go ahead. this leads me to my question, yeah. Kate, um, because we, we are discussing the um, um, the ballot on yeah. May sixth. Yeah. Um, marijuana okay. ban ballot questions. Question one. Let me go there. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I, I won't read it. But to me, it could be confusing to a voter. Okay. Because uh, if someone goes up and says, you know, all they're thinking is, I do not want marijuana in Hanson, they're going to vote no. Yes. Which is actually confirming a vote to have marijuana in Hanson. Okay. Can that question be simplified? So, yes and no, and it depends upon what you find confusing. So. Let me give you the framework of what the legislation requires because this isn't your typical, a normal ballot question could be much more simple. But the legislation requires this particular ballot to contain the actual text of the bylaw. It's just expressly written in the statute that way. And that's not so usual. I mean, you would never have, if you're doing some other kind of referendum, you just wouldn't have that in there. Um, so, what can be changed <laughs> is, I guess, the style of the question, if you think that's too, that's too much or too wordy, we could change the style of that question and, and the summary to some degree. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you, yeah, the, the summary has to be in there because of summary the Summary does, yeah, written. but we could alter the wording. But in the question itself, yep. it could simply be, should Hanson have retail marijuana shops? Yes or no? A yes vote is you want it. A no vote is you do not want retail shops in Hanson. So are you saying that's what we have to have some specific language around? I want the question to reference the bylaw amend amendment. We can, we can wordsmith that thing for sure, Jim. But what I want it to do is I definitely want it to say reference the general bylaw because look we have two questions we've got oops oh no it's on the it's she's double-sided it okay we've got the second question and it relates to zoning okay. and the reason why I want to reference the bylaw in the question is because that's it's not like just a, a, a referendum question where you're finding out what the town wants you're saying does the town want this bylaw and so 
some communities where they had their election first and they had the bylaw printed in it and then had town meeting after that where amendments were made on the mm -hmm. floor question was is that still effective so so that's why I want to reference the bylaw in the question itself but that said I can try to simplify it even being even being I know what you stupid saying. legalese. You know, I hate doing. I hate using legalese when, too. When when this originally was even on the state ballot, there was quite a hullabaloo from people saying that they thought the language was ambiguous. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if that was sour grips. I really don't know, but it, it was. You, you know, you kind of almost needed a decoder ring to figure out, like, let's see, if I'm against it, I, you know, yeah. what. So I see what you're saying. It, it, if you can clarify, I oh, will. Yeah. I'll work. Work on. Oh, sorry. Please. Could, could we just put two lines at the bottom, just saying, if you vote yes, this, you know, I mean, keep all your language. Yeah. And then just at the very bottom, just say, you know, if you vote yes, this is what's going to happen. If you vote no, this is what's going to happen. So I think um, I have that here. It's kind of embedded in the summary. Yeah, that, that's why I wanted it at the bottom. Yeah, and maybe maybe we can work that and maybe put it in bold yes. or something like that. Um, could it be first? Yeah. Put it first in bold, and no vote would allow it. That's smart, Mary. Uh, yep. That was my <laughs> question. That could, could we put it first? Yeah, so that's that's really smart. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? And some piece got cut out here. I was changing this today, and I think. Oh, no, no you updated it in email to us. Yeah, too. yeah, I'll do that. We do have a little time. So. Hey, I'm just looking to make sure that if, and I'm not saying I'm for or against it. Yep. I'm just saying that if someone is for it or against it, they know how they're voting. Yeah. Yes. You're right. But only if you it's clear what they're voting for. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and like, you don't want to spend yeah. 10 hours in the booth trying to No, because it when, if, yeah. you, if you skim this question, yeah. and nobody wants to be... In, in a voting booth anyways. Yeah. Um, should Hanson adopt the following amendment uh, for recreational marijuana retailers? No. That's yeah. what I'm checking. No, but I didn't read the whole question or the summary. All I did was vote no because I don't want it. Yeah. And that was the wrong vote. Yeah, right. Okay, you're, you're making a really good point. So let me work Can on you this. Say that thing. again, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want that in the minutes? <laughs> <laughs> it's confusing because a you don't want mar um, retail marijuana, so vote yes. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I I will absolutely try to make it crystal clear, and I'll send it back to you a revised version. Okay. We don't have to get the ballot questions to Beth until 35 days before the election. Um, so we can work on the language. Um, and I figured out in that email, Mary, 135 days was, was, and it's like the night before town meeting. Right. Yeah. Right. So we would have to vote town meeting to yeah. get it on. And I'm also saying, too, though, because Adam brought the point up of $450,000, so somebody's got that in their head, which yeah. Hanson wouldn't get compared to Worcester. Yeah. But if they want the money, they want to vote yes, and That's they right. could be confused, too. Yeah. Yep. Either no, way, you're right. Either you're way, right. you want to you want to make sure that everyone votes and their vote is counted in the way they expect it to be counted. Right. Yeah. No, I fully agree. I will work on that. I will try to be. I will try to be um, simple. Do you have anything else under the marijuana, Kate? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I think I that was so really it. Policy. Oh, one thing you guys will have to talk about is that, remember, there has to be a public hearing on this, too. It's a planning board. I'll reach out to them, but it, let's keep it on our, um, in our heads. Well, we wanted to have a forum anyway. Um, I don't know if that technically meets the need of the hearing, um, but before town meeting, we wanted to have a forum where people could literally ask whatever questions they wanted whether it be legal or medical or law enforcement whatever you know types of questions so that when they show up you know there might be things that have been percolating that they've been thinking about uh, they've really had no way of asking a live person and we thought that that would be a good idea. don't we have to vote the policy is that what she wants us to vote great idea and i um did that i sat with the one of our clients um for their 
marijuana advisory oh, policy committee or whatever, and no, I sat I with them every single time no, I'm they met. Because they didn't have they, at that they point, they weren't, weren't sure more. what the town wanted to do. We did want they want to prohibit? Place. Did yeah, they want to allow comes it? With an application. Yeah. So I, I had done an initial so presentation, like which I can provide. I think you and I talked about this. Um, I can provide you a PowerPoint. I can come. And you can do it even well before town meeting, okay. so then people can sit and stew mm -hmm. and think yeah. about it and really mull it over and make an informed decision. I mean, so I think we would think it maybe at least a month before you know, town meeting, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, to give yeah. people yeah. time. Which Not sounds too far like so advanced, far but away, but it's really like, okay. It's, yeah. yeah. It's a hop, skip, and then yeah. down. But if yeah. we tie it in with zoning, however we do it, but we did, we did tell the residents that we I think I'd we were keep them separate. Yeah. I would okay. keep yeah. them separate. Okay. Because it's going to delve into things beyond what the article is presenting, and people are going to ask all kinds of questions. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they'll come and ask. So, Kate, yeah. this guidance for prospective marijuana establishments, this is something that we need to vote this policy in tonight in case something. Yeah, comes. I would. Okay, and you're comfortable with the way it's written? Yes. Okay. Um, I move to adopt the guidance for prospective marijuana establishment policy. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 5 0. Mary. Okay. Okay. Um, so did we said that I would go on to the Rockland? I mean to the uh, yes. So what we're going to do? Thank yeah. you for that. So we're going to skip around to the bottom, and we're going to vote to under town administrator's report, vote to close and post no trespassing signs at the factory pond. And that is, if you have your iPads, that's item thirteen thirteen A. Um, just so the board is aware, and I did send an email out, I think as soon as I was made aware of it, and I reached out to Kate and Jay. The, uh, about a week or so, well, less than a week or so ago, apparently a bazooka round was found in Factory Pond, um, which is as a result of um, the explosions, the demolition. Wait, that's can you say that again? Did you say bazooka? Bazooka. <laughs> okay, all right. I just, I yes. just wanted to make sure. I yes, was a bazooka sure. round. All right. Um, which was, uh, you know, obviously as a result of the testing that had been done up there over the, you know, decades by uh, the military and MIT um, that's being cleared up. Um, it seems like it's taken years now. Uh, that's being cleaned up, um, uh, and we hear the explosions. However, uh, like I said, the, inadvertently a bazooka round was found in the pond, which obviously expands the area of concern uh, in, in which people can be injured. Uh, so uh, the, the town of uh, Hanover reached out to me. I immediately reached out to the board to make them aware of it. Again, I reached out to Kate and Jay because there is a little bit of peculiarity about this. Um, the town of Hanover last night voted to uh, post no trespass and closed their side of the pond. Uh, however, it was easy for them. Uh, and it was easy for them because all of the Hanover land is municipal land. So obviously the Board of Selectmen, uh, you know, the Conservation Commission, whomever has control over that land and can close it all down. On the Hanson side of that pond, we control two sections of land. Uh, they're actually under the auspices of conservation. However, the Board of Selectmen tonight will vote to close that down in lieu of a conservation meeting because of the emergency nature. Uh, the Conservation Commission at its next meeting next week will confirm that vote or verify that vote. But we're moving forward on this now because this literally is a matter of life and death. Mm -hmm. However, the vast majority of parcels that abut that water are privately owned. Uh, so the question that I posed to Kate was to what degree do we have the authority to post on private property? Uh, to what degree do we have the authority to tell people that they can't go from their private property into that water? So what I'm going to ask the board to do tonight is vote those two parcels of land to close those down and post. And then Kate has some thoughts on how we should go about mm -hmm. contacting and immediately, you know, tomorrow, uh, reaching out to the, um, I think it's probably about a dozen, maybe a little less than a dozen, 
pro uh, private property owners to give them the, their options. And, I mean, and at the very the least, we can are. advise them that there's a... Oh, yes, you know, very much so. Even if we can't prohibit, we can say, it's, yes. you know, probably not in your best interest to be, you know, and keep think, going through the tools. And again, I'll, that's I'll, right. I'll like cake it into it, but I think at a minimum, that's what we're doing, Laura. Okay. So you want us to vote on these two? On closing these two parcels. Yeah, let's just let Kate and Kate will. Yeah, let's let the first. Yeah. So, and I wish sometimes I would come here and just have a yes or no answer. <laughs> it's always like with a caveat. But in any event, so, so the town can be treated just like any other individual as being a trespasser if you went entered onto private property without permission. Okay, so, so you have to be careful. So, what I suggested is do exactly. Uh, what Laura suggested and reach out to these property owners and say listen we have this situation and it is a safety issue because unbeknownst to me I asked Mike specifically because I know nothing about ammunitions or, or guns now you do and now I do I'm an expert um, but apparently these these bazooka um, pieces of ammunition actually in and of themselves without the gun are dangerous if you come into contact with them right so they have an existing hazard on their property so first up foremost is to notify them of the hazard and say indicate that the town intends on posting signs throughout the pond including on their property and let them know that they can contact the town administrator if they were opposed to this kind of action okay and so then we have to decide okay how many people have have decided to to not accept the town's advice and not accept these signs on their property and deal with it because there are a couple of avenues. When I was doing some research, I actually came across a special act specific to Hansen, which gives you authority over all the lakes and the ponds in the town. Okay, and so it would require more digging to determine what's the extent of that. Does it extend to the uh, watermark or, or, or where, you know, we'll have to do some more research on that. Or is it such a safety issue that actually the Board of Health could come in and act um, using their police powers? So there are a couple of options should outreach not work, but the best approach is always to reach out to the residents and make them your partner because it's in their best interest because if we notified them that there was this existing condition and something were to happen on their property to say a UPS man who's delivering goods, they could theoretically be liable. We don't want, I mean the UPS man isn't going to be tra traipsing around in the lake, but uh, we don't want anyone injured and they don't want anyone injured and it's in their best interest to prevent people and to notify people that when they're taking their dog for a walk or whatever in that area um, that it's a danger well conversely we don't want the town to have a liability that we knew and didn't convey the exactly information right. to them so are we going to take an approach with the um you know advisement by sort of telling people and then it say sort of a negative consent like unless we hear from you by such and such a date we're going to be posting is that that's of? what i suggest because the reason being is people are busy and they forget the envelope in their pocketbook for you know three months and then they realize that they met, intended on giving their assent so but if someone truly feels that they really don't want the town coming on the property, they're immediately going to get on the phone with Mike. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the best approach. Yeah, yeah, that seems very prudent. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to vote and close, <clears throat> excuse me, and post no trespassing signs at Factory Pond. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Any more questions? All those in favor? 5 0. And do we have to vote also for Mike to take the additional action of sending the letter Just advising? Just to cover ourselves, yeah. I, would. I think this really needs to be so very I move official. That we t we uh, take the additional action, action of writing a letter. Yeah, you, you know, uh, if I could offer, um, maybe uh, kind of modify to say you're you're authorizing me to contact. Okay. Uh, because I, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple different ways of doing this. Okay, so um, all right. So, so I don't want to pigeonhole myself. I think obviously something in writing is necessary, but I'm also thinking of not necessarily me, but you know, someone from the town visiting, knocking on the door mm -hmm. of each of these. So that again, we go above and beyond, because Send again, it's officer. yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. So I um, I move that we authorize Mike to contact by whatever means he deems um, appropriate. Um, all impacted uh, residents. 
Second. Perfect. <laughs> Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Five like, Where was the bazooka found? In, in the water itself. But in the hand of the pot? I don't know exactly okay. uh, how deep into the water. Uh, actually, and I'm, I um, don't mind mentioning what I know of it, an individual went out there with a magnet specifically fishing for these oh. rounds. Oh, my okay. word. Fair. But, uh, I mean, the chief is here. Just to ask, uh, do we have the capability with the department to retrieve that bazooka round? Um, or would somebody special have to be called? Oh, somebody like a spe special oh, oh, state okay. ops kind of? Well, the way it's yeah. working right now oh. is they have contracted out with a firm that that's what they do internationally. Right. So there was a company there that's been doing it over the course of the last year or so. That round would have been delivered in some manner or fashion or manner, whether we found it on the Hanson side or the Hanover side, to these professionals that are already in place that have the expertise in, in, in you know, de demolishing. I mean, the only reason I'm yeah. asking the chief that is because now that this is going to go out and these people are going to be warned, he may end up getting a, or the station would end up getting a call or two that they see something floating. Um, and so what would you do, body. Chief? Would you contact that company that's detonating? Yeah, yep. okay. They have jurisdiction over all of it. Yep. The TriTech is the company that's working in Hanover. Um, I worked with them for years in, in the military on the base. They cleaned up odors. Um, it's not surprising you're finding stuff that you didn't think you'd find in places you didn't think you'd find it. Um, it it's, put it this way, I don't have a boat. If somebody's out there, we're going to tell them to come off. Yeah. And we'll wait until they do it. Um, I don't see us trying to kayak. We're not going to send our harbor master, Robbie O'Brien. No, and I'm not hanging <coughs> paddles on the ground or anything. Yeah. Nothing's going to float. They didn't develop anything that's going to pop up. Okay. There's going to be some, but, you know, no one should be in there until they can until they go through there with someone See what you did, Joe, uh, Jim? The chief's going to be looking for a boat next budget. <laughs> I'm good with boats. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. We send the harbor master out there. Exactly. If you want to make that motion, I'm good with it. <laughs> you could get him some swimmies. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kate, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, okay. right. we'll be expecting you to guide us through this whole process. I, I would love to. All right. Okay. Have a great night, guys. Thank you. Okay, so back under new business. Discussion regarding Columbia Gas Whitman Street construction project. Brian Gillis? Yep. Hi, Brian. Hi. Come on up. Yeah, can you briefly tell us what you guys are going to be doing down on Whitman Street? Please. Sure. First of all, my name is Brian Gillis from Columbia Gas. I'm a construction supervisor. Uh, thanks for having me tonight. Uh, we met last week at the DPW with uh, the chief uh, fire department, DPW, town manager. Um, project that came up last year through the zoning board, uh, get, getting all the approvals, conservation and whatnot. So now we're actually coming uh, time to construction. So we had a little informal meeting, kind of saying, hey, that this is who our contractor is, this is what we plan on doing, you know, type of construction, signage we're going to be putting up, uh, potential detours that we're going to be doing in town, uh, all that stuff. So the old, the, I don't know how much you guys know about the project. But uh, I don't know. Anything. Okay. So the, the goal of this project is we currently have a regulator station, which reduces our gas pressure. Um, it's at the corner of Brook Street and Winter Street. Currently, it's on the ground. You guys probably don't see it, but you might see a yellow guardrail there. There's oh, some yeah. vault covers yeah. there. A bunch of yellow flags. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of jumps out at you. So, so that's an underground regulator pit. It's, it's old. It's been there from uh, 1960, probably. Um, so we're looking to uh, update that, and we bought a piece of land up the street on Whit Whitman Street. Yeah, hey, Whitman and Winter. Yep. Uh, we recently cleared that land, uh, prepped it all for construction, but we're doing a, uh, an above-ground regulator station, and it's going to be located up there. So to get the gas up there, we need to extend a new gas line up. We're running about, 20, about 2,600 feet of 16-inch uh, steel gas main, which is going to run up to that pit up on Whitman Street. From there, it's gonna reduce the gas pressure down, uh, which it currently does now, and then it's gonna back feed into the existing natural gas system. Now, what does, an, what does that look like to the you know average Joe driving by? What are we gonna be seeing? Uh, I do have some renderings here. Uh, I'll, pa I'll pass them around. And are you doing whatever you can to mitigate 
it looking, you know, kind of yeah. like it doesn't belong. Uh, yeah, so if you drive by, if you drive by the piece of property now, it, it's cleared. I mean, it's cleared pretty well. Okay. Uh, it's a tight site for us, you know, because yeah. of the, the resource areas there, the wetlands, the buffer zones. Uh, we do have a pretty extensive mitiga uh, mitigation and planning plan when we're done. There's an approved set of plans, which I don't have with me tonight. But I can see you're doing a lot of plantings yep. and that type of thing, so it's not going to be right in everybody's face as yeah. they're going by. Our goal is to get this screened as much as possible okay. for the public and the abutters that live there. Uh, obviously, some of the planning may take a little time to mature to, to really uh, screen it, but the fencing and stuff is going to be all, you know, vinyl slabs, and I think a dark green color. Okay, because we know obviously you need to do this. It's probably a safety and efficiency issue, um, but obviously we want it to be minimal impact to the people that live around that area. No, I, I agree with you. Mm. So yeah, it's going to be fenced in compound. Uh, when it's all said and done, you know, pretty much be all stone. You're not going to see beyond the fencing. It's going to be all screened. Okay. Out front, we'll have landscaping along, along the street. There'll be a little gravel. Uh, area where we can turn in just you know we got to go up there probably check it on almost a daily I don't know if it's daily basis but you know go up there do maintenance on it check up on stuff some regular frequency yeah. Yeah. it's going to be all state-of-the-art too there's a lot of technology here that we don't have in the other location we can actually control and monitor the gas flow out in Ohio where Does I guess make a lot of noise uh, it no no so so they said the uh, this station is supposed to be as loud as like a uh, air conditioning unit so it's so pretty quiet when uh, construction start and end? I'm sorry, Matt. No, so, so we're looking to start uh, mobilizing some of the equipment there this week, setting up erosion controls, and we're looking at uh, probably construction within the roadway starting next week. And how long would that take? Uh, Roughly. The road, it probably two to three months total, but again, that's including some of the work that's on the site. So the work on the site's really not going to affect the traffic and whatnot. So you got to go from the old one up to winter and make a left up to women. Correct. Yep. Okay. But I think we're, I think we're going to move off Winter Street pretty quick. I mean that's the main corridor. And we're working with Chief now. To, we got a detour in, and we're going to accommodate vehicles. Uh, we're getting some message boards out. If they weren't out delivered today, they're coming tomorrow to advise the motorists. You know that pass through there every day. Matt, your question. Uh, yeah, I have two questions. Um, what kind of light, lighting will you have throughout the night? Um, and how much luminance will that be? And will that obstruct, you know, you know I mean, I don't want to have like a, yeah. you know, football field. Football field. Yeah. I can't answer that question 100% because I wasn't the one at the zoning board hearings, which I believe that was addressed. But I, I want to believe there's been conversations in the office as to have almost no lighting in, in on motion sensor. But, but it's not going to be lit up like a football field. And then my second, I can assure you that. And then my second question is for these plantings. Is it in your contract with your uh, landscaper that you remove the ball, uh, the B and B, like the burlap on the B and B of the trees? Because oftentimes people plant the trees, and then with the burlap and the no, we'll uh, take them off. Yeah, okay. So yeah. It doesn't allow the roots to, for the tree yeah, to grow. No, when they, it's, they it's, die. It's, you know you're them. going to have to sign something that says you're going to remove the burlap, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. Okay. I'll, I'll save them for you, all right? Um, <laughs> and you're working very closely with conservation on this? Correct, yep. Okay. I've, I've already been in uh, touch with the acting agent. I forget, I forget his name. Matt but, Tannis. Yeah, Matt, because yep. we had to set up the, the, all the notifications for the existing site. We set up the erosion controls, the DEP sign. So now we're doing the same thing on this phase. Uh, probably any day this week I get the sign made up. The erosion controls will be coming in. Uh, I don't expect any issues with that, you know, for dewatering out there, for running into groundwater. We'll, we'll have to look at treating that water before it's discharged, uh, say, into a drain or possibly a wetland. Okay, something. and I have to ask this question because it's dealing with Winter Street, and you guys know this isn't going to impact the lights at all, right? Our, our no. lights? Okay, all right. Because no. we've been hearing That's help sweet. from everybody about the light situation, so. Um, okay. Well, I think it was important... Um, you know, there's, there's been a couple of, as you just alluded to, uh, projects in the area, uh, detours, and they've been there for <clears throat> an appreciable amount of time, and, uh, you know, the citizens have expressed some concerns. Um, so I was thought it was important after we had the meeting last week that I asked Brian to come in 
and to the best of our ability, and we may not have done exactly this in the past, but get the word out there uh, to people through whatever avenue that we have to include this meeting as to the fact that there is going to be, again, uh, some detours. Uh, and to give the, uh, the people that are listening, that are watching it, an understanding why those detours are taking place. Uh, one of the other discussions that uh, Brian and I and, and some of the other people at that meeting last week had <clears throat> was the fact that, as Brian alluded to, the, the, current, um, the current facility there is underground, although you can see you know, some guardrails and you can see some uh, yellow uh, areas and whatnot. By and large, nobody knows what's there. And now there's going to be something <clears throat> that people are going to be able to see. So I think it was also important for people to get an idea of what suddenly was showing up in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it is safe and there are, you know, it's being monitored and it's nothing to have really any concern over. So it's more of a, a sort of an attempt at uh, getting some public information out there and uh, trying to get ahead of a, a potential situation as opposed to reacting to it as we kind of have done in the past couple of instances. So I. Thank you, Brian, for taking the yeah. time. And to show I assume them. that you've had hearings with the butters and all that stuff. And yeah, I, I, get, I wasn't involved with that part, but this started last summer, and okay. I believe there was a meeting with just the butters. Uh, if, if if it wasn't out of the town hall, it might have been um, in, at a meeting, public hearing. Okay. But now, obviously, this will impact people other than the butters in terms of the delays. Yes. And like you said, yeah. Laura, and I think everyone on the board can appreciate, you know. If people start getting delayed coming back and forth, especially during work hours, you know, rush hours, it, it, it becomes an aggravation and inconvenience. So get yeah, the, the information issue, out it was, there. It was Russian roulette, quite honestly. Oh, for, out there, for a yeah. Weeks yeah. There, so, yeah. So. All right, Brian, thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Good luck with that barrel app. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good question. Good. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not kidding. We don't want kidding. little stymied dwarf trees Absolutely there. not. Well, then the tree dies. Yeah, exactly. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, <laughs> new business. <laughs> Discussion and possible vote of TIF location on Main Street. I'm like, I've read through everything on my agenda since Friday, combed through everything, and... I honestly don't know what that is. Yeah, so I'm just going to address that briefly. Um, I am con in continue, continuing discussions with um, a, an entity down on Main Street that uh, is interested in doing some redevelopment, um, as I have alluded to in some of the past meetings. Um, I've also been in contact with and continue to, actually I have a meeting set up for the, um, the middle of next week with uh, a couple more um, government agencies, state agencies. Uh, to basically, the, the goal is uh, to potentially uh, present a uh, tax incentive financing uh, plan before town meeting in October. Um, there is still some more information that I'm gathering. I'd hope to have more information uh, uh, and bring it before the board this evening. But um, it is fairly complicated and there are an awful lot of moving parts. So what I want to use this opportunity the agenda to say, other than that, is that I, I know that the town has, and we've started an economic development uh, committee. I know in the past the town had an economic target area committee. Unfortunately, I'm going to, at the next meeting, request the town create yet another committee. Um, and that committee is going to be the TIF committee, the Tax Incentive Financing Committee. And basically what that committee will do is sit down with this potential uh, project owner and uh, negotiate a TIF, um, an agreement, to bring the, potentially bring before uh, the October town meeting uh, for approval. Uh, what that would include is uh, a length of time for the special tax financing. Uh, it would include uh, the percentages at which we, will, we would uh, propose granting them a break on the additional value of the taxes of the improvement. Uh, but it's a negotiation. Uh, and it needs people involved in that negotiation that have a bit of wherewithal of how all of that works. Uh, so at the next meeting, I, I've looked at, uh, and I was actually one, on one of these committees in another town, uh, what I would look to propose that the, the board consider creating at the next meeting is a TIF, that would, a TIF committee that would consist of either our assessor or a representative from the Board of Assessors, um, somebody from the planning board, a member of the Board of Selectmen and myself. And we would go into, we'd start talks with um, 
the uh, the project owner. And again, we we narrow down whether it was a, a five year TIF. It can go it can go as short as five years. It can go as long as twenty years. Nobody from FinCom, Mike. Um, if the board would entertain such, the only reason I did not include a member of the FinCom is. And I, 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 I want to put this politely. They've been reached out to, to be on other committees in the past, and they've declined to do such. Obviously, the Board of Selectmen doesn't have any uh, uh, authority over them since there is a moderate, it's a moderator uh, yep. uh, appointed uh, committee. And you know, I don't, I don't necessarily want to exclude them, but you know, they they've been reticent to get involved in any of these I, things. I think that this may be an exception though, because this is a real life. It's happening. It's going to impact the town. Well, you know, um, so I, I I I would rather err on the side of inviting. And if they don't end up uh, ponying somebody up, then they don't pony somebody and then up. That, and that's fine. That's certainly fine with me. And I I will say that in you know the other committee that I was on, there was a member of that uh, okay. particular committee. So. That's what uh, that's what I would pose at the next meeting that the board um, the board approve. I'll put it. Uh, I'll actually put it in writing and put it before you. But it's um, exciting. And if it, it actually it is, it really is. It is, and it really is um, a gateway to to what we hope will happen down yep. there. Um, I, I can say that um, that I reached out through the uh, the building inspector to ask the current owner of uh, the old Ocean Spray building. To do some maintenance uh, on the sidewalks there, and uh, he's agreed to do such. Um, we are going to look at options towards uh, cleaning up the old um, uh, Firemen's Association building, or the old white building. Last year, we did have the um, we had the uh, the sheriff's uh, inmate. Uh, uh, um, program come and clean up our fire station down there uh, and it's been maintained since and it looks nice unfortunately right next to it we, we also own a building that needs an awful lot of attention uh, you know there's been outreach to some other people yes. that own properties down there yeah. and they've done a little bit of work uh, I'd like to see more done but um, you know it's all uh, it goes back to that sort of broken windows theory that uh, you know if, if you let one piece of property kind of go down the tubes you have sort of creep so the whole area looks that way I think the reverse is also true, that you have one or two of these locations clean themselves up, and the other locations feel almost pressure to clean up. Yep. And um, it really should be cleaned up. And uh, it's uh, it's obviously one of the gateways to the town of Hanson, um, and every little step matters to, in terms of trying to clean that up. I know so, every single one of us heard when we were on the campaign trail and since then that people would like to see something happen there. So um, any kind of forward progress is welcome. Well, again, not to beat a dead horse, but anecdotally, I always tell uh, everyone in terms of that particular location, you know, my parents have been living here for about 17 years now, and that was the approach that when I'd come and visit them, and I'd look, and i wow, this isn't handsome. And it, it just, it, do, it does not fit in this community. And obviously there are financial constraints on, on private business owners, there's financial constraints on, on the town in terms of what it can do. But it is... I mean, it's it, it's it's basically a gem waiting waiting to be refound, mm -hmm. and some of the things that I just talked about in the beginning of this little little spiel uh, are uh, steps in the direction of trying to redevelop it. And just the cleaning up is a step in trying to you know at least in the short term make it more presentable. Um, I really think, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I really think in the coming year or so, I think we're going to see some very positive changes down there, and it's it's a um, you know, it's a team effort, it's it's the town, it's the administration, it's the business owner, and it's whatever support we can get out of the state. And uh, all those things seem to be coming together at this point. Um, it's something I'd like to push forward as quickly as possible, but it's also something I don't want to rush and scare people off. Um, and then we go back to the basic premise as well is these are privately owned pieces of property. So at the end of the day, you know, it's the United States of America and it's your property as long as you're not doing anything illegal with it. We can only really try to control and, and help and push, and I, I think that's what we're doing, and I think it's gonna it's gonna reap the benefits fairly soon. Well, kudos. That sounds positive. And I will um, this meeting that I have uh, the middle of the week next week. I'll report out on that um, at the next selectmen's meeting when I ask you to officially create this committee, uh, as well as the fact I'll mention that uh, <coughs> that Laura and I are going to meet with somebody um, uh, Friday at 10:30. 
who also may have a, uh, a role to play in this overall development. And we'll report out on that as well. So we've got an awful lot of people looking at it. We've got an awful lot of people involved. We've got an energized uh, a business owner. Um, I think the stars are all lining up. So knock wood and we'll move forward. Good. Thank you. Okay, next, adopt a fuel-efficient vehicle policy. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to reschedule that, Mr. Chairman. Um, there were some questions that were raised uh, at the 11th hour um, that I would prefer to uh, to answer um, with yep. some staff members, with some department heads. So um, we're not going to lose anything in terms of yeah. waiting to the next week or the next meeting to vote this in. Keep me in the loop. Yep. Please. Okay, approve and authorize the town administrator to sign the contract with the Gowrie Group. This so. is this is fairly boilerplate. This is a group that pretty much uh, oversees all of our um, uh, 111 111F. Yeah, uh, the, the officers out injured. Uh, the um, I'm not sure if I've had one since I've been here. However, I've used this group in other uh, communities. Um, and I've used them quite extensively in other communities. Uh, there's an awful lot that goes with these sorts of claims, a lot of monitoring and making sure that certain things are done within, you know, the rights of the individual, but also protecting the rights of the town and adhering to uh, 111F and, and the laws. Uh, it, it's this is for all town employees, not mm -hmm. just offices, no. right? Or is it just, just offices? Pol just police and fire. Yep. Just police and yep. fire, okay. It's still quite reasonable, $3,800? Yes. Yeah, no, I mean, wow. We, we brought them in several years ago because we spent a lot of money with town council doing this stuff. Right. And they, we've saved a lot of money. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. And they've, they've, like I said, I, I haven't used them since I've been here. Mary obviously has, but I've used them in another community. And, and they're very good. They're very efficient and, <coughs> excuse me, very helpful. Um, I move that we enter into the Massachusetts Agreement Injured on Duty Claim Services for Consulting Services Only Clients with Gowry Group. Gowry Claim Services, I guess is what it's called. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any questions? And to authorize Mike to sign. And authorize Mike to sign said <laughs> agreement. Do we need the agreement dates or no? Good. I think I have. I can read the whole agreement, Kenny, yes. if you want. Uh, no, you. thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the guy already signed. Oh, yeah, this his. is just a copy with his signature. You all have a yeah. copy of his one okay. with his signature. Yeah. That's not I, original. I have, I have the originals. Uh, I was like, whoa. Okay. All in favor? Five all, Mary. Okay, next item six on the agenda accept and vote donations. I think I remember two being on yep. there. Mm -hmm. One was a member of McQuarrie's, McQuarrie's group, uh, Tim McQuarrie, five hundred dollars to police and dare account, and the Depina family, one hundred dollars to the police gift account. I move we accept the donations uh, from the Depina family and uh, McQuar Tim McQuarrie. Second. Motion to be made and second. All in favor? Five zero. Did I? IT director. Um, Items, uh, yeah, no, we table it. Yeah, we're gonna discuss that the next meeting. I apologize for not stating that. Thank you for keeping me on my toes, though, Tracy. <laughs> okay, item seven under requests. American Red Cross Camp Kwani fee waiver for a blood drive, August twenty second. I vote that we approve the fee waiver for American Red Cross to have a blood drive up at Camp Kiwani on August 22nd. Yep. Sorry. From 9 a.m. to 4. Yep. Motion's been made and seconded by Mr. Hickey. All in favor? 5 0. Mr. Chairman, I, I do want to note that um, this is a modified form. Um, the board had asked us to take a look at adding some information um, a while back, and um, I think that uh, I think we've addressed the ki the questions. Yes. It we, looks cleaned up. It really looks awesome. Good. Yeah. yeah. And I like the fact that you know you're only going to need to have one form, and you'll be able to see what the recreation decision was. Yes. And the, and the, the nonprofit yeah. and yeah. all that. I noticed that it's on great. Sunday. It, yeah. it, it looks really good. So, so we, we specifically too we added in uh, a potential anticipated profit by the event, and I know that. Uh, it, in the past, there has been questions. There have been questions regarding, um, you know, are, are we giving these people a discount? And, and if they're, they're 
we are, are they making money? Right. And, and obviously there are, there are situations in which you'd want them to make money if they're a, you know, a non-profit, a, you know, a shelter for you know, battered women or, or uh, for um, you know, substance abuse or things of that nature. So if but there were those questions, so we wanted to make sure that um, you know, that information was con contained on there. Obviously a blood drive is not going to do raise any money, but in the future may save a life yeah well that, yeah no it looks great and you kept it to one page it's you know nice and clean and now if the recreation yep. committee if they denied a request would that still come to us or would it end there i think it would end there i think it would end there okay. i think that's the way we've written up the policy yes it okay. is yep i did, the only reason why i ask is it says approved and denied by recreation yeah yeah, basically, we should never. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, actually, so, technically, I think they meant to check. Curious. Technically, approved. you'd never, you'd never see something come before you that said denied because okay. it would end there. But. No, but I think Mike, what he's saying is uh, the word approved should be checked on what we just saw, yes. even though it's got the date, so yes. it's kind of implied yeah. since we're seeing it. But okay, next we have annual appointments. That's item eight on your agenda. Uh, is there anybody that has told you that they don't want to be reappointed or, um, you know, has or anybody that we've been told has got attendance problems? Because most of the committees do have bylaws that people can't miss three or four meetings. Well, we, we have a general bylaw that yeah. says a, a committee member, um, if you miss three or more, yep. the committee can vote to have them removed, but the vote has to come to the Board of Selectmen. From I the have committee. not received okay. anything like that. Okay. Uh, but I did get... Um, a, a letter from um, Chris Howard just yesterday. Oh, so he was resigning from the um, repair committee. From the repair committee? Yes. Okay. So he, we just won't reappoint him. Yep. Okay. Um, and um, and obviously we got the resignation from Mr. Vess. And um, yeah. also, I um, have been told that Brian Smith is up for reappointment on the Recreation Commission. No, I checked that. Okay. I went back to when he was appointed, and his term is through the 19th, to 2019. Okay. Okay. So he's got another year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so how are we going to do these, Mary? We're going to take out... What do you think? If we just remove Chris Howard, can we do it? Mark Vest. Yeah, yeah, Chris Howard, Mark, Mark Vest. Yep. He's about, on the highway. How about the two highlights? Um, Overholzer under the appeals. Oh, yep, really? Mr. Overholzer has moved out of town. And then under the bylaw committee, Judy Murdoch. Right. We That committee has been around forever, and we haven't had any members on it. Okay. Uh, I'm sure Judy would be happy not to get a letter from me this year. <laughs> and um, and we the board was going to consider, last year we talked about it, yes. doing something else with the bylaw committee. At the time... The bylaw committees, when it was in existence and actually functioning, what they would do is review any changes in the bylaws, and like these general bylaws that we're going to be presenting in October. They would go to the general bylaw committee. They would read Correct. them over, make you know recommended uh, recommended changes, say where we should be placing it if it's a new bylaw, where you know within the bylaws they should be placed. They didn't actually sit down and go through the bylaws and say these are antiquated. You need to change these. And I believe um, Jay Talman was with us when we had done it previously, and he said, you know, he can sit down with us sometime and go through it. There have been a lot of changes in the statutes, okay. so our bylaws are a little long. Uh, so how do we dissolve date. that, and should we? Or is that for a discussion for another um, day? I will have to follow up on that and see okay. if it's a selectman appoint if it's a selectman appointed okay. committee and it's pretty much dissolved when if you I don't mean, reappoint not Judy. And there's no need to have him <laughs> and Jay's gonna handle it, then it should probably be dissolved. Okay, is Jay but is Jay just doing the freshening up to uh, of the state versus the town? Because Yeah, he wasn't gonna do all the bylaws. Right. He said he would be available to assist with it. So if you want to create a committee that's gonna do yeah, a so bylaw review drive committee. It, Kenny, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds um, like they haven't been meeting. And yeah, but, they have, but that yeah. means that our bylaws are woefully like out of date with what the state. Because mm -hmm. you know, you, if you don't keep up, then the, the divide just becomes. Well, we did some more updates more. last year. Well, it, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I believe that uh, one of the goals the board set before me um, last uh, last meeting or so, I think, was to take into consideration trying to breathe life or, or have some sort of an approach to the bylaws. Yes. So, um, yeah. and. 
you know, that's something that I will, I will continue to look into and make a recommendation. I don't know if you think it, maybe you want to take the first pass with Jay and then bring in some a group to look at the bylaws afterwards. I don't know what approach you want to take, but we'll defer I, to I, you. I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what approach I'm going to take at this point. Um, it's obviously, like I said, it, it's something that you've tasked me with doing, and it will get done. But I can't off the top of my head say that I know the, the correct approach. So Judy's the only one on there, right? Correct. And I can assure you, she doesn't want to be. So I, I just think we would. Would you leave the not, committee not and just not have anybody on? Just right. not a pointer. Yeah, yeah. You don't dissolve the committee. Okay. So we have, with the exception of Mike Jones, Judy Murdoch, Robert Oldbeholzer, and Mark Vess. Right. I'm looking for a motion to reappoint all these permissions. So moved. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Any questions? All in favor? 5 0. Four. And thank you to everybody for stepping up that was, again. I'll abstain. You'll abstain? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. So, Kelly. 4 0 1. Got it. Okay. Next, item 9 on your iPads. Final Plymouth County Hospital Rehouse Committee. It looks like we want to reappoint Don Howard of no, appoint. This is a new appointment. Yes, All right, so new appointment. I he's apologize. Being appointed as a citizen at large. New appointment for Don Howard, 860 Winter Street, term to expire on June 30, 2019. So moved. So second. Motion's been made and seconded. Don's done a great job over there at that committee, so we ought to continue to keep him there. I know he loves it too. So. And they're thrilled that he's going to be able to yeah. stay with them. So. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Um, so who's the, who did we vote in? Who's going over there from us? Uh, that would be me. That yeah. would be you. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Matt. And we still have one, um, one more one space open. at large uh, opening, which I know Marianne has been really soliciting on in Facebook and, and messaging people. So hopefully people will apply. Okay. All in favor? 5 -oh. Okay. Next is item nine. We have a resignation from Mr. Mark Vess which I will read. The Board of Selectmen is with great regret that I must withdraw from the Highway Building Committee. Personal obligations at home have required that my time is needed to meet these home obligations. I have enjoyed my years on this committee and believe they are well on their way to solving a most immediate problem. I wish the committee well going forward with this task. Sincerely yours, Mark Fess. So I'm looking for a motion to accept the resignation with regret. So moved. Motion's been made seconded. and seconded. All in favor? 5 0. So we'll be looking for a new member on the Highway Building Committee. Yeah, and Mary, that actually reminds me, and I know this is an ongoing, extremely arduous task, um, but I'm just wondering can you just double check who we've got openings for? And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it might be helpful. Um, when Matt's reading the announcements to say we have one opening for okay. capital, you mm -hmm. know, just because it seems like I think people are never sh too sure if we've filled up those slots or not. And I'm never too sure whether I should encourage people to apply for a certain committee because I know people have applied, but I don't know if they've gotten. Can add it on the announcements? That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. No, I, I have the list all set up so I can do that. Not a problem. All right. Thank you. Okay, under old business, um, approve revisions to the vehicle policy. It's item 11. Yeah, I uh, what was revised? Um, yeah, it's, this it's, has been revised several times over the past years. Yeah, it, it, it's been underlined. It uh, basically, yeah. the revision that I'm looking for is technically there is Are you a looking for. It? Yeah, there's, there's it's driving a vehicle. So is it the underline? Yeah, this one vehicle not assigned to is underlined. The town officials or employees to take home regularly. Shall be garage at the end of the day. Thank you. And at the end of each day and or after use in an assigned missable parking lot. No other vehicles are to be taken home at the end of the end of the work day without permission of the town administrator. Yeah, the way that it read before is uh, there was uh, no opportunity to bring a, a vehicle home uh, at the end of the day. Uh, I believe that we need to change that because there have been situations in which um, you know, somebody may not live close to town and they're using the vehicle um, to go to a meeting uh, in another part of the state. So it really 
doesn't make any sense for that person to return all the way to town hall, pick up the vehicle, and then drive the vehicle uh, to whatever their destination is. So in instances where it makes sense for permission to be given to a, an employee to bring the car home at the end of the vehicle home at the end of the evening, the understanding that that morning they're going to the meeting and then they're returning from the meeting, um, it but, just it just seems to make but sense. But you're going to oversee this, and it's not yes. willy nilly. Everybody's taking their no. All, all, and, all of this okay. is overseen by me. Yeah. yeah. So how would you make sure that the town employees know the new rule? Anybody oh, it, it'll it? it'll be dispersed just like any other policy. Okay. So you'll send it out. So oh, yes. know they yeah. have to come to you and get permission before. Oh yes, and and, and, and you know every, okay. everyone knows that the standing policy, and they have. Um, you know, they have asked me, you know, if they could use the vehicle or if the vehicle wasn't available, if I would give them permission to use their own vehicles. So, yeah, the, it's working quite well in terms of the back and forth between me and the employees. Um, oh, go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say, does that mean that there will be some private vehicles that end up spending the night in the assigned municipal parking lots? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and that and it would be, and we actually had that happen. Um, the, the person did not bring the vehicle home, but she left the vehicle overnight because they went to something that they were spending an overnight. It was a two-day seminar, and they were spending an overnight. I think it was like in Springfield or somewhere. So she asked whether or not it was permissible for her to leave her vehicle here at Town Hall, which I said yes, just informed the police that, you know, they don't think that, you know, something untoward had happened to the person. Yeah. Okay. Um, I vote that we adopt the revised municipal vehicle policy as presented to us. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. I didn't know who, who seconded. Uh, yeah. Mr. Boss. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? 5-0. Okay, item 12 and 12A, approve and vote social media technology policy. I've seen this on the agenda probably 20 times. Well, this is the last time. This, and it looked pretty much the same when I, looked, when I reviewed it this week. Mike, is this the one we talked about two weeks ago? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's already gone to the lawyers? It's all, the, all set. And the union lawyers? No, it has not gone to the It's gone to our union, the uh, union lawyer, the, we have to the approve gentleman it first, who does our right? labor council. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So once we approve it, then he'll send it off. Uh, that actually was one of my questions. Um, what happens to some of the town Facebook pages that people have got um, in terms of prospectively, some of which might be union um, run? Um, who's going to have the oversight of monitoring those? The IT director when we bring him on. Okay. And this, it, right now, to be clear, you know, we, we are voting this in again for. Uh, personnel bylaw employees and non-union yes. employees yep. and that we are going to engage with the respective respective unions in terms of bringing these into their uh, into their contracts as well okay. and Mike could you tell me what the um, what the changes were Just hold up with on our end with our lawyers the hold up in our it was just it was coordinating between the two lawyers and myself and it was it was getting the up one pass and then another pass and then yet another pass back and forth. This is definitely attorneys. the same as the last one that I had. Mm -hmm. I it, it's 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 fairly yeah they're all fairly the same. And she was just a matter of making sure that you know because we get lawyers that wear two different hats. We get lawyers that do our general counsel and there's lawyers that do our labor relations. And obviously, there are significant impacts or potential significant impacts in terms of labor relations as we go forward and, and present um, these to the unions. There is a typo on page four, item 12. Um, they've spelled the town incorrectly. They've put an M instead of an N. Handsome. Yep. Um, but um, as long as that um, change is made. Um, which, pol would, which policy was that? Uh, that's the social media policy, okay. uh, page four. Number uh, 12. Number 12. Mm. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I have two comments. Um, the first one was um, I think we need to make sure that our whoever is using these social media websites, they need to understand the open meeting laws. And anyone that's involved with the committees need to understand it too. 
because one thing that uh, Wes and I learned at the Massachusetts Selectmen Association meeting was if three out of five people like a comment, that's uh, considered a uh, consensus if it's a matter of that committee. Really? And then so there could be potentially open meeting law violation. Exactly. Oh and then the other thing that we need to really make sure of is that we don't we need to make sure that we have a protocol on how to remove offensive language. Mm -hmm. So if someone comments on a page and they, you know, they make some off colored comments. Yeah. And then that person goes to remove that comment from that string. Um, now you're deleting and destroying public records. So we need to make sure that we have protocols in place and they're not addressed in this um, social media document um, because it's more of an open meeting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that we need to make sure that not only are do the employees of the town, but anyone that's a part of the committees uh, understand that the, uh, there are some serious consequences of running um, social media pages. Now, I'm all for government transparency and making sure stuff gets out to Facebook and stuff, but we just need to make sure we move forward in the appropriate manners. Well, I believe, and I'll have to check, I believe that uh, the information that is given to every appointed and elected official, uh, I believe it's at the beginning of the calendar year, uh, which they sign off on in terms of recognition of open meeting law, among other things. Uh, I my assumption is that's addressed in there in terms of serial meetings, which is I think what you're alluding to, or serial votes. Mm -hmm. um, we can check to see if that's addressed in that information that's given out every year. Um, it would be appropriate that it be included there. Mm -hmm. um, again, because everyone signs off and they're supposed to get it once a year. Uh, I can check into that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, because that that really raised my eyebrows when mm -hmm. we learned about it. It was just like. Someone makes a comment about, oh, you know, whatever their opinion is on a subject matter, mm -hmm. and three of us like it on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Maybe it's a de facto vote in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. If it's three members of the That's committee. pretty interesting. So, yeah, no, so it, it makes sense. It's you learn every something, you know, something new every day in terms of all this new technology, and you know, it, generally my concerns along those lines have always been along emails, but that's a valid point as well. Mm -hmm. So, so Matt, are you saying you'd like to see this tweaked or? Uh, just taken under consideration. I just want, yeah, I just want us to take that under consideration. I, you know, I mean, I don't know necessarily if this document here, if, you know, I mean, we should add it on, just saying, please review, you know, or consider these things. I just want to bring well, it up on the board. Well, why don't well, you could you could make a motion to accept the policy with the with the understanding that uh, language of that effect <coughs> will be uh, will be inserted as well. I mean, I understand what you're saying. I yeah. think. And, you know, I can write it up, or I could have Leo or Kate write it up, and um, you know, we can. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to vote on it, obviously, because we don't want to get into the situation you're just talking about. But I can send out, you know, what I've added into it, so so everyone has, uh, you know, yeah, a certain level of comfort. That sounds. I think that sounds reasonable. All right, we can do that. Um, so I move that we adopt the social media policy as written, but also with the addition of what Mr. Dyer has just brought up with respect to um, open meeting law impacts of using social media. Do you hear a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Five votes. And Mike, that could just be an amendment to this policy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Good. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Keep us up Thank on you. the social media stuff yeah. that we're all too old for. <laughs> Okay, so next we have town administrator report. Okay, uh, let's see. As usual, I kind of touch upon other those some of these things uh, throughout the rest of the meeting. Um, I will let the board know that um, we did receive five responses to the uh, the legal RFP, which uh, I opened up yesterday, and uh, I have to put together um, a comparison, making sure that what I give to the board is all apples to apples, because they price them out a little different. You know, one prices out, you know, an, uh, uh, an associate that's been there five years or more, as opposed to a general partner, and an another firm may not put it that way. You know, we, we put out there the option of, um, of uh, proposing a retainer. Uh, some have 
put that in some haven't so again I just want to make sure that whatever I give to the board it's apples to apples so you can make a, a rational sort of judgment on how you want to move forward on that so my anticipation is being able to have that stuff before you at the next meeting on the, the 9th the 10th, 10th. 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 Um, as I mentioned uh, I did extend the uh, the cell tower uh, deadline to uh, actually August the 24th I had been asked to give about 45 additional days. Uh, I believe that I had reported to the board, uh, I forget what the timing was exactly, that we did have a, a site visit. We did have an interested um, a contractor company come out and actually do, do a tour and look at the site. And they've, they've asked for additional information that we're giving to them. We're, we will end up getting a uh, response from them. Uh, in uh, extending the deadline, I reached out to the two other companies that had expressed interest, and they still have interest. So um, we're going to set up site visits for them as well. So um, I would, again, I anticipate at least one, if not more, um, uh, uh, credible um, responses to this RFP. But like I said, I, I slid it a little longer so that we got thoughtful, uh, uh, comprehensive responses. Mike, uh, did you say August 24? Yes. Um, we had just today, uh, we had a, um, a briefing session and a tour of uh, the proposed new location for uh, the highway uh, barn, the highway facility. Uh, we had only two companies attend, so my assumption is we will have two companies put in for that RFP. Um, but uh, we will have competition, which is good. Uh, so that moves forward. Uh, I believe that I have uh, that closing. I think at the end of this month, I think it closes on the 29th. So um, it'd be a quick turnaround because obviously we want, we want to get moving forward in terms of having something to present uh, to town meeting in October. And uh, both the companies felt whoever won that particular, wins the, the next round of engineering can deliver in time to have something to put before town meeting. As long as we have, again, we have the, the, the land finally conveyed over to us. So that's still, you know, it's nine tenths down the road, but there's still a couple more things apparently that need to get done. So that moves forward. Um, I think I mentioned that uh, Laura and I will be will be meeting actually with a company called uh, Keller Williams uh, on the um, on the uh, uh, Friday at 10:30 uh, uh, to discuss uh, McQuan uh, potential reuses of the McQuan building. Um, they uh, they actually specialize or there's a division of this company that specialized in reuse potential reuse of uh, municipal buildings so um, I had reached out to this individual a couple of weeks or so ago I may have reported it out already but the date is this Friday at uh, 1130 and, and Laura is a member of the reuse committee uh, as a selectman's representative and myself will have that discussion and and hopefully we you know fairly sooner than later we will be able to bring the full committee back in together and, and deliver to them the information that we've been we've been gathering again we've set up uh, I believe it's going to happen not next week but the, the week uh, after that we will have the company that we use to take down the the hospital come in tour the quan and give us an idea of the direction we want to go in is, is take that building down what that will cost in terms of demo and taking care of the hazmats um, and again might get the risk of being boring these are not foregone conclusions. No, no. These are just, uh, you know, our way of vetting various options uh, that we will ultimately be putting before the board of directors. Exactly. And, and, and in case in point is, and I didn't mention it at, at this particular junction, but I've mentioned it previously that we do also have that RFP out there uh, in which we have res we received some responses, I think three or four at this point, uh, in terms of reuse of the building as uh, affordable housing, senior housing, so on and so forth. So. You know, as Laura mentions, nothing's a foregone conclusion. We are going to explore every reasonable avenue as to potential reuse or non-reuse of the building. So, um, I had a meeting um, yesterday uh, with a member of the um, the reuse committee, the the hospital reuse committee, with um, a gentleman who uh, we anticipate could bring. Uh, the planning process for that for that ground specifically for park use uh, to the next level as the board is aware uh, we have we're actually going to receive the final product from the Conway school within the next couple of days uh, that was really just an initial phase to put something kind of conceptually <clears throat> in front of people <coughs> again based on the input that was gathered uh, not only through the the survey not only through um, 
the, uh, the I guess in a sense the ratification of the of the direction uh, that the committee's been going in at a town me during a town meeting vote, but um, but also uh, as a result of uh, a couple of community meetings that the Conway School had here in Hanson over the course of the last month or so. Um, they're again they're putting together uh, or have put together something more conceptual uh, off of which we can start building uh, the next step in the committee's uh, opinion is to bring in somebody who can hone that down and make it more I don't want to say uh, shovel ready that's still a little ways away but get a little more concrete and more exact in, in particulars and planning um, so the idea is, and we met with this gentleman um, back when we met with the Conway School, it's been about a year now, um, and at that time we had jointly sort of come to the conclusion that this gentleman, this gentleman's company made more sense to get involved at this phase as opposed to the initial phase. So um, the idea is to, uh, and he will be before that entire committee in the next week or so, uh, but to get a sense of what, what he can do for uh, the town, how much it will cost the town, put that information before um, CPC, get approval for funding to go before the October town meeting, secure that funding, and then have him go to that next stage, and then potentially have something that we may be able to bring to town meeting in the spring. So that continues to move forward. Uh, it, it's, it's moving forward with uh, a, a, an appreciable degree of, of momentum, but not at a breakneck uh, break Break, break neck, neck speed uh, uh, because you know you get in troubles when you do things too too fast so I'm comfortable with the direction in which it's going um, the only other thing that I will mention at this point is on the 27th of June uh, and I may have alluded to this in a previous meeting uh, I will be meeting with a representative from the MBTA uh, to discuss uh, what they're calling the rail project which is um, the MBTA is is been exploring getting involved with helping out uh, projects that would benefit ridership on the T. Uh, I think we all know what part of town I'm talking about. And it, again, it, it's part and parcel of what we discussed or I mentioned a little earlier in terms of getting a lot of different players involved in uh, the potential of Main Street. Uh, this was something, uh, and again, if I mentioned it last week, I or last meeting, I apologize, but it's something that is, is brand new for the T. Uh, nobody fully outside of the T understands it. I will understand it more on the 27th. Uh, I've explained to the gentleman you know, what we're looking at, what the potential is on that particular site. And he basically said that's almost tailor-made for what this project is, has been conceived to do. So um, again, uh, Hopefully we're, we're getting a, we're getting a lot of yeah. things lined up, and uh, I think in the totality of, of, of help, both uh, financially and technically, um, we may be seeing some really decent things happening there in the next year or so. So that's on the 27th, and again, I'll I'll report out how that meeting goes at our next meeting. Any progress hmm. on the putting together the matrix of the goals and yeah, I'll present that to, actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna send that to you prior, not you exclusively, but I'm gonna send that to the board prior to the next meeting for its review and any feedback that it wishes to give to me. And then I I don't know if we technically need to vote on that at the next meeting, but we'll you know I guess conceptually the board can either accept it or make make tweaks to it at Somehow that point. Formalize yeah. It a little. Just some expected dates on yeah. some yes. of the stuff. Yeah, and like I and said at the last meeting, I, I actually work better when I've got milestones, so to speak. Uh, Mary just mentioned to me, I, I did want to report to the board, and I, I was going to, and it slipped my mind when the gentleman for the gas company was here. I wanted to make the board aware of uh, the activity that's happening um, just to the right of town hall on, on the green. Um, there is going to be some sort of a new regu regulatory box put um, on town property that is going to control or it's going to be able to uh, you know monitor the work that had been done out in front of uh, town hall they came to us a couple of months or so ago and, and Brian and I uh, discussed with them the best place to put something like that it's it's basically uh, it's going to be again some sort of I can't get into the technicalities because I don't fully understood them but there's going to be a little monitoring sort of control box put in town hall so that's what that activity is that you see out front yeah, they're uh, right there today. Yeah. Is that something that's temporary or there's something that's forever? Oh, it'll be forever. But you won't see it. I mean, they're, they're basically, it's going to be a trench. Right now, it's, you know, they're going to put a gas line in. It's going to be a trench. I think those things go two or three feet deep. Uh, it's a foot wide. And they're going to fill it all in. And the only thing at the end of the day you're going to see is a little box. Okay. Oh, can, I, can we just put an all points bulletin out to every 
utility and anybody that might need to dig up that section of the road one one more time with feeling because honestly like, it's been like ridiculous. oh this this is this is the lawn that we're digging up yeah right? but no but they not were the street out, but they, they were on they, the street today oh were they yeah, yeah they, they, was, they were staging out yep. in front of the yep. realty company that's it mike and that's all i have all right. yes thank you so next is approved minutes June 5th, item 14. Did everybody get a chance to review the minutes? Mm -hmm. yeah. I move that we approve the minutes of uh, June 5th. Second. Motion to made and seconded. Uh, can I just, just out of curiosity, but I actually, I think I remember this. First page, new business, appointments, motion. I'm just, I know we were uh, having difficulty with his last name. And I think that's exactly the way Laura said it because we were having difficulty with his last name. But then to see Amanda Sullivan gets the full treatment. Yeah, it should be. It's story. like, you know, just yeah. kind of it's like. But I, I do think that's the way we played well, it out. Well, you know what? I attempted to pronounce it. You did. It, I think so. And then apologized because I was sure I killed it. But um, So I just yeah. give, it, give him the full treatment. <laughs> All right. Andrew's last name will be included in the minutes. There you go. Updated. Update to the minutes. So the motion has been made and seconded. Any more questions or comments? All in favor? 5 0, Mary. Okay, now we have one day liquor licenses. So I'll read through all the liquor licenses and then look for a motion at the end. Okay, uh, Diane Picano, Hanover, Friday, July 6th, 6, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., graduation. Christine Finder, Abington, Saturday, July 7th, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., wedding. Stephanie Pytel, Medford, Saturday, July 14th, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., wedding. Sue Shields, Hanson, Sunday, July 15th, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., Shawa. Megan Grant, Norton, Saturday, July 21st, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., wedding. Hanson Library Foundation, Wednesday, July 25th, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., Trivia Night. Hope Harkney, Abington, Saturday, July 28th, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., Graduation. Looking for a motion to <coughs> approve these one-day liquor licenses so for Kim Kwani. Second. A motion's been made and seconded. Any questions? All in favor? 5 -0. Okay, committee reports. The 200th anniversary committee, Laura. Nothing to report, sir. We will be meeting um, on the 28th, I believe, uh, so next week, um, okay. but nothing to report. Uh, final Plymouth County Hospital reuse. Matt hasn't had a chance to get to a meeting, right? Then well, we'll yes. No, I went uh, yeah. last, okay, excellent. Went I last week. We're meeting tomorrow, and Mike covered pretty much everything, all the highlights from the last meeting. Good. Excellent. McCon School Reuse Committee. Mike already hit the high point, so nothing to report. We'll report back the next meeting. Oh, okay. that's good. Mm. And Hanson School Repair Committee. Um, nothing to report on that, but I did go to the facilities committee meeting um, before the school committee. Nothing okay. last. Um, uh, yeah, it was a week ago last Wednesday. So when we do have a meeting, I'll report to them what you know, information is ready to get out. Okay. And the Highway Building Committee. So we're going to have our next meeting July 2nd. It's a tough week because that's July 4th, but we don't want to lose any momentum. The RFP for the engineering is going to expire the Friday before. So Mike and I had a meeting this morning with the potential bidders. A uh, little disappointed there was only two there, you know. But um, so Are we they went, viable though, the two that were there? Yes. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just... Yeah, just, I know you, you expect you want, a whole room full of people, and like, them, you know, yeah. yeah. You know. So it is what it is. Yeah. Well, I know I, I can report that because I, I went back and looked, and I I did send that to a, to eleven viable firms, that, and that's all they do. And if I went through the names, you'd recognize you know three quarters of them. Yeah, when that process started, we interviewed I want to say half a dozen. We went to the police station and we interviewed. We were there for three hours and we interviewed, and we all seven of us voted separately. Um, for Weston and Sampson, yeah. and it was amazing, just based on the information we had and the presentation, and their experience with the um, the highway buildings. 
Well, that's how you know so you've got the right time. one. If you know you're all independent, and, uh, yeah, to that it was just because yeah. it never works that way. Yeah. So um, we'll see. So what will happen is the reason why we're going to meet on that Monday is, and hopefully I kind of threw Mike under the bus because the bid ends that Friday at ten. So hopefully he can do what he needs to do to get us the information for Monday night's meeting, the second. So then we can vote on whatever potential bid is and then bring that to the Board of Selectmen on July 10th for a vote on the engineering firm. So again, we can keep the momentum going. So yep. kind of stinks to meet on 4th of July week, but we really don't have a choice. Nope. So that being said, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Um, oh. Can I, and I apologize just before you close. Absolutely. Mr. Chairman, uh, in terms of uh, Plymouth County Hospital report, it, it just dawned on me. Um, I had a conversation within the last couple of hours or so uh, with the gentleman that I, I had asked to do the appraisal of the street of house, and I wanted to inform this board, and uh, if you could bring it to your board, because uh, I haven't spoken with Phil tomorrow, um, that uh, he will have that appraisal done probably sometime in the middle of next week. And so okay. then we can go, we can start moving forward on, you know, auctioning. Uh, that's not an auction, like I said, that, that's a more of a bid process, but we can move towards uh, uh, disposing of that house. But I just wanted to add that. It was just last minute information, it just dawned on me. So now I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion seconded. All those in favor? 5 0, Mary. Thank you, Carol. Not rush off. Thank you.